Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're here with Najman Sari, and we are going through a little, a little bit of time with love reading. So I'm hoping to kindle and share with you the books I've enjoyed reading, I love reading, which I benefit from. So today I've picked up on, um, we're about a week into uh, Ramadan, is also just look at the seed of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are many, many there, but the one I enjoyed and I found, it took it from, the, it's early, based on his earlier sources. And um, so this is what I enjoyed, and it's called uh, Muhammad, His Life Based on the Earlier Sources by Martin Lynx. Many of you may be familiar of him. He uh, is a Muslim reader. You know, if you want Google, I did know on it right now. I can't remember, but he, his biography is based on the uh, earlier sources, and he, he's got a good narrative style of, of reflecting it both in simplicity and the grandeur. And... Uh, he was, uh, I'm not sure when he became Muslim, but he completed his degree in Oxford. So it's always good to know and read on the author. And I especially like reading when it's uh, a revert author, like we had Ahmad von Denver when we looked at Ulum al-Quran. And you know, they're absolutely beautiful, with their commitment and what they write. And, and even my saying this sounds a bit like condescending, and it's not at all meant to be. But I love reading books by new Muslims who are steeped in the faith much more than the likes of me who was born a Muslim and yet I know so little. So this was one of his books. One of the best things that captured my attention in this book when I got it is um, that it has in the beginning, uh, no, towards at the end, a whole, whether you can see it or not at the light, um, it's got his family tree from where it came, and that our Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So fear the first known Quraysh, and then it came down, 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 and then the two tribes until there was uh, Abdul Manaf. Then he had his son Hashim, Abdul Muttalib, and then the the the, the twelve sons, uh, or however many, of um, Abdul Muttalib, and uh, he where he was a son. So I like that just to know the 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 lineage of where it came from. It had a it a bit of a map that we can find from many other places but it's um because it's from the earlier sources uh, they say that one of the critiques is that they are maybe romanticized or um what was one of the critiques that uh, it's more a biograph uh, narrative than a historical account which is fine we need the biographical account so from the beginning from his uh, family uh, what I found very interesting, even before he was a Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the pact that they had um, uh, of uh, of putting, you know, when that we are going to now support the poor and we're not going to uh, uh, let them be abused more than a certain amount. And this happened before Rasulullah's uh, Nabuwa. And uh, so, what was uh, you know, all that's interesting. It, it gives it very nicely how in the 40 years Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived, how is immaculate his, his um, personality was even from there. So uh, th that's the beautiful thing. The, the one I do want to share, it's, you know, it reads beautifully in a detailed fashion, I love the chapter, and that's where I'm going to go to, uh, chapter 60, it's on the siege. And this is on the Battle of the Trench, where they dug the trench. So when the trench was finished, it took them six days, and then the Quraysh were approaching. And it was the Qatafans, it was the Quraysh, and it was some others. So, um, and within, because, uh, so the, the beauty, it's really like, it, it reads to me like a detective story. And so forgive me, that's what I'm going to just share with you. Just the passage of... Uh, in this book on the seed of our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The whole seed is beautiful, but I do love the, the, the story around the Battle of the Trench. So, uh, uh, Medina from three, th maybe it's co uh, it's covered from the mountains or the hills or from three sides, and one side was exposed where they dug the trench. So it took them. And in the town of Medina, we still have now one of the, uh, the Yehud tribes, uh, the Banu Quraiza. And uh, they were committed to honoring and not 
betraying the Muslims in this battle of the trench and letting others out. But what happened with them is um, uh, Hu Ye was from the Bani Nadir who who had been expelled and they were residing in somewhere and but they joined the Quraysh too to come. So what happened with them is that this uh, Hu, Hu, Hu Ye, he, uh, the Banu Qaraysa looked at him as a person of bad omen bad fortune and who will bring disaster. He brought disasters to his people. They moved out and now he, they feared him all the more because he had an overpowering, overwhelming power that was difficult to counter. So if he wanted something, he's going to get it. So he comes. So they say they didn't want to let, they said, let me in, let me in. And he said, no, I don't want you to let. He said, I, I have a pact with Muhammad and I'm not going to break it. So you don't come and try to make me into a traitor. And yet he managed to, he said, no, 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 come, come, let me in, let me in, we'll talk. He said, no, I won't. He just did, you know, look at this. This is a sorrowful thing with this Banu Qurayza. They didn't want to renege on their pact with Rasulullah. And yet this, um, this is how the lesson to take home is how, you know, when you're in bad company, really avoid them. Don't let them get a word in. Another, another example later, if I can, within the same, I will say when uh, um, Khalid bin Walid wanted to, he said, no, I do think he's a Rasul. And somebody managed to convince him, he said, you should be the last person to be saying that. He said, why? He said, because do you, uh, he's reminding him unnecessarily of what did he do to your father. So those, you know, this kind of instigating moments is what you pick up. Anyway, here. So they said, no, he will not escape. We've got the Quraysh, we've got this, we've got that. So you really must open the doors for us at the back. So this this has been put down. So there's a lot of trouble, you know, the, the uh, food, you know, in this whole battle. I'm just going to move on. So um, the Banu Quraysh renunciation of the pact did not remain hidden. Okay, thanks to this. Uh, uh, so um, he said the Banu Qurayza have broken their treaty and they're at war with us. So we've got our back uncovered as well. So now it was reduced. So now they had to reduce the force on the trench and they had to go and check out the Banu Qurayza. So what happened? Um, and it was tr and there's a history of what kept happening in the skirmishes there. So. Um, it was really, you know, like now what's happening in Palestine here. So the Prophet knew that in many souls amongst his people, the power of endurance was nearly at their end. But he knew also that each day past, the enemy likewise felt the grip of hardship tightening to them. And this is what the faith we need to have in our today's circumstance of what's going on in Gaza. And anyway, so then they said, um, the Khatafa, so this is going on. The beautiful thing I like, which I find as a detective, so these negotiations came to nothing and they're still going on with other people. Then um, there was one person within the, uh, he was in Medina. This person, his, his visit in Medina profoundly affected them. And therefore, with mixed feeling, he now came out to support the Makkans for that. But his admiration for the people of the new religion was confirmed and in increased with the resistance. And we'll get to him now. Then came the hour when he said to himself, God has cast Allah Islam in me. He came with the Mushrik, uh, with the Ghatafans, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the ally. And um, he now becomes a Muslim. So that night, it was almost immediately after the project to separate the truce, uh, you know, there was, it was break, a breakdown of, you know, truce uh, situation. He made his way to the city and to the camp, and he came to see the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what happened? He said, what brought you here, Naeem? So he said, I have come to declare my faith in the, and to testify that you are the, the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So bid me to do, so now tell me what to do. Because he saw these, you know, connivances and this tra tra traitor kind of activity. So the beautiful thing is, um, uh, to relate to, uh, anyway, so he comes, uh, from the Mushrik party, and he's become Nuaym uh, is his name. He said, uh, my people and the others know note of my becoming Muslim. So he said, so the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, to the utmost of your power, set them at odds with each other. Okay, so uh, he's, uh, um, so you command me what to do. So Noam goes back and uh, so then he, he asks permission. He said, can I tell a lie? So Prophet Sallallahu says, you will draw them off with, uh, from each other and say what, you, say what you will. To draw them away for war is deception. 
So he's going back now to his people like a spy. And what does he do? He comes back through the town, goes to the Banu Qurayza. They welcome as a friend. They tell him. And they said, I come not for this, but to warn you of my fears of your safety. These are the Banu Qurayza who are within Medina. And now he's gone to them and he's telling them that those people who you now allied with and reneged on your treaty, they are also going to stab you in the back and they're going to go off and you're going to be left with dealing with Rasulullah on your own because they had promised that we will win for sure and then you will be easy. But now if they go away, this is the Quraysh, the Qatafans and all the others who are uh, holding them in siege. If they go away, you're going to be left on your own. So what does he tell them? He says, he says, he said they, they should refuse to strike a blow for Quraysh until, until they're given in ransom as hostage some of the Quraysh people. He said, you keep some of your people here because if you run off, we're going to be, uh, you know, we're going to be blocked away. I mean, we're going to be uh, uh, so few and we're going to be then killed. So they, he then went to his one time friend to the Quraysh and he said, listen, I think the, the Jews are regretting the, the uh, Banu Quraysa are regretting reneging on their treaty with Rasulullah. So if they ask you to give some people as hostages, know that their intention is not good. So the beauty, what I love about reading this passage, he explains it so beautifully about all these intricate of creating seeds of distrust. And that happens and there's a fallout. And then Allah, by his mercy, what he says, now he goes, what did you tell us? He said, you, they've deserted us and now they're seeking to betray us. So he said, no, who yea, they won't. But on Sunday they will fight like blazing fire. It's only when he told them of the demand for the hostages. I'm, I'm reading them as fast as I can just to give you a glimpse of what was going on. He was taken aback and... Um, so this fallout happened. So then when the the, the, uh, the weather had been extremely cold and wet and now piercing wind came in while all these connivances are going on. But what I'm saying is that it's so beautifully written, just this, uh, and I, it hit me because of how it resonates with what's going on in Gaza. So anyway, so um, they finally went away and... Um, uh, and then the Bani Quraiza were left on their own, and then they were dealt in the way they were dealt, that they were all um, killed off. And so, you know, sometimes the non-Muslims, this Banu Quraiza, if you read on them, what happened to them, they say, oh, look how mean we were to the Banu Qurayzas and this and that. You see, it's like taking 7th of October as a, dead, as a date of what happened then. And from there, wasn't that horrible what they did? Hello, what's that 75 years of horrible stuff that the other party has been doing? So I, I like using this, the Battle of the Trench, in this example, because we need to know what happened and how things happened and how traitors emerged, how things happened there, because that's where you then have an answer for the non-Muslims when they say, no, but you've also been racist or something. Whereas we have not, you know, in fact, um, time and again, we see now whether it was the uh, Muslim Spain which gave refugees against the Inquisitions to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the Jews and so on, so on. But that's another chapter. But this beautiful chapter, 6061, gives you that break of because this is the case that the um, Islamophobes, the Orientalists pick up of how mean and rude and that we kill the people. But, you know, when you, it's a traitor, that's recognize of what you do with a traitor. Here it was the whole tribe that did that. So the women and the children were spared, but everything. So it's a sad story, but even the build up to it, how these Banu Quraiza didn't want that Huye uh, uh, to come and talk to them. They really tried to came out, but the bulldozing nature. So to me, all these things come to your mind that how you need to watch out for people who have this power of persuasion in the negative how you really need to steer clear because, you know, the propaganda, whether it's a social media, how you can get caught up in their fine talk in, in whatever, whatever. So this is how reading books, reading the book on Sira of knowing it's the true things of how things happen is so important. So that's just in a nutshell of my little bit of wanting to share with you this book on Sira that we really must, whether you go to another book or another book, whatever, I found this particular Martin Lings as a classic uh, Sira book to suggest uh, that we go and look at Sira for Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.
So I hope that was a, a beneficial for you. And uh, please, you pray for me as I pray for all of us um, Muslims out there in this beautiful month of Ramadan, and especially for our brethren in all the oppressed places, particularly in Palestine. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Uh -huh.